Yes, folks, you are now eating halal meat and you probably don't even know about it. And you don't even have a choice about it either. Now, I've just spoken to our local butcher at one of the big supermarkets, and this is what he told me. He said, all meat in New Zealand is now slaughtered the Muslim way, and has been done so for a few years now, and is certified and packaged as halal meat. Now, when the package arrives at the supermarket and is opened by an uncertified person, it magically turns into non-halal meat. Try and figure that out. And the leading meat companies in New Zealand are pushing the scam. Have a look. Yeah, so this is AFCO, uh, one of New Zealand's largest meat companies. Sales within New Zealand. The New Zealand market remains an important part of AFCO's business philosophy and we are focused on the year-round customer requirements providing the same commitment that we maintain with our global markets including specialised halal production for an increasingly diverse New Zealand consumer. Increasingly diverse New Zealand consumer. Really? Muslims only make up about 1% of the New Zealand population. So why are the rest of us forced to, to eat halal meat? Yeah, now Silver Fern Farms uh, spin a similar story. And I think Silver Fern Farms is the biggest company in New Zealand, biggest meat works company in New Zealand. Grass-fed, pasture-raised, succulently tender, halal certified. Wonderful halal meat. Yeah, so now this is New Zealand Islamic Development Trust. Now these people want all halal products to be Sharia compliant in New Zealand. Yes, Islamic Sharia compliant. So down here are their clients. Now, this is only one list from one Islamic company. So there are hundreds of companies around New Zealand pushing thousands of halal products onto New Zealand, all pushing Sharia into New Zealand. So I'll just scroll down slowly here and have a look. You can see for yourself. And we have dairy products. And we have Fonterra's in amongst it. These are all dairy companies pushing the same stuff. Seafood companies, poultry companies, honey companies, and meat companies. Yeah, so what's going on here, folks? Just as many other religions have dietary restrictions, halal food is all Muslims are allowed to eat under Islamic rules. As well as alcohol, Islam prohibits pork and any meat from animals killed in prohibited ways or that died of natural causes. Halal meat is from animals slaughtered according to Islamic practices in the presence of a Muslim who may say a blessing. Some food you might think is halal, say cakes or biscuits, can contain prohibited ingredients like pig fat or gelatin. So some Muslims avoid food that isn't halal certified just to be safe. And making your product halal friendly is big business by one... Yes, it is big business. Muslims spend more than a trillion US dollars a year on halal... F but not in New Zealand, they don't. ...food and drink. And Indonesia, which has the world's largest Muslim population, was the third biggest market for Australian food exports in 2012-13. But trying to figure out how much is spent on halal certification is difficult. In Australia, there are at least 21 organisations that certify food as halal, and there are no rules regulating the cost. Yeah, and similar is happening in New Zealand. 
and this is the scam. Non-Muslims are funding Muslim organisations. Of that certification. Only companies that certify meat for export are subject to government regulation and none of the halal certifiers are required to publicly report their earnings. Some suppliers told us the cost of certification was negligible compared to company revenue. One organisation that does publicly disclose their earnings from halal certification is Muslims Australia. In 2012, they collected a little under $650,000 from certification. Certification organisations say the money is used to fund mosques, schools and missionary work. Yeah, so why are non-Muslims funding that? And the Australian government agency that tracks all financial transactions in and out of Australia say they've found no evidence of any link between halal certification organisations and terrorism. Uh, not quite so fast. I understand that Paul talks about not worrying about eating meat sacrificed to idols, but meat quote, offered up through halal is more than just idol meat. I believe a portion of those monies collected are then sent back to support jihadist organizations and feel we should not purchase such items. But I'm seeing the halal brand symbol appear more and more on American products. What gives? Is this a part of political correctness gone awry? What are your thoughts on this? Well, the halal concept is you face the animal toward Mecca, then you slit his throat. Mm. So you say, all right, that's halal. So far, no problem. It's like kosher. That's okay. But our research shows and our team has discovered that a portion of all the profits from these halal butcheries is going to the Muslim Brotherhood. So it's not a question of religion. It's a question of where does the money go? So if you buy halal food, you're sending money to the Brotherhood. The Brotherhood in turn supports Hamas and, uh, you know, yes. Islamic Jihad and some of these other things. Well, not, not that, but Hamas particularly mm -hmm. and, and uh, uh, other radical organizations. So that... Anyway, now to the Q Society of, of Australia who expose the rot. I value and believe in the democratic... Oh, by the way, I'll actually I'll post a link in the description below to this video. ...and free society we enjoy in Australia. I value and believe in freedom of religion. I have a problem, though, when one religion or religious practice is imposed upon me and leaves me with little or no choice. Mm. It is my assertion that halal certification practices are, in fact, imposed upon me and our society, often without consumer knowledge or consent. Many people who speak out against halal certification are labelled as bigots or racist. Exactly. I have never heard someone who criticises the Catholic Church labelled a racist or a bigot. Speaking out against communism is not seen as an attack on Chinese or North Korean people. You would certainly be seen as an idiot to call anti-communism racism. And yet anyone who wants to discuss the religious political ideology known as Islam is shouted down with ridiculous mm. name calling. Why is Islam as a subject untouchable and off limits? This kind of behaviour is not conducive to consumer confidence. It is simply rude, arrogant and dismissive of genuine concerns. Imagine if it were discovered tomorrow that a Christian church or leader had been growing rich from a certification scheme on products. Imagine if it were discovered they went around to companies charging fees for inspections to make it permissible Imagine if they started calling their detractors racists and bigots because they objected to this fee. Can you imagine the media criticising and mocking anyone who objected to a Christian leader becoming a millionaire from such practices? That would never happen, nor should it. There would be outrage expressed all over the mm. country. It sounds ridiculous, but that is exactly what is happening with halal certification. No one in Australia would tolerate such a scheme if it were perpetuated by right-wing, fundamental Christians, and yet we seem to live in this politically correct bubble, which... Absolutely true. ...which makes it taboo to criticise Islam, but you can criticise just about anything else. And because we demand a choice and transparency in this industry, we are called racists and bigots. If your argument for halal certification is... Uh you know, to be all warm and fuzzy when it comes to cultural understanding, 
you would also want clear labelling for uh, those other people that are in cultures where they can't actually partake in, in something that's gone through a halal ritual slaughter. The other thing the Australian consumer needs to know about is whether money from their purchase will fund a religious organisation, whether it be Islamic, Hindu, Jewish or Christian. So they can make a choice about whether they want their money to go to that organisation. Look, halal certification uh, concerns a lot of people uh, and people just don't want to be forced to pay for uh, a product where part of the money is going off to a religious organisation. Absolutely. Uh, ..to basically fund elements of the propagation of that religion. And, I, you know, I can clearly understand mm. that. We are an overall multicultural country, and that's what's beautiful about Australia. But at the same time, specific groups should not be strictly imposing certain things or certain laws that come from different countries onto the people that are here. Many companies have paid halal fees despite their products already being permissible for Muslims to consume. The requirements for a product to be halal or permissible basically means no pork, alcohol or carrion. Most people can read the labels to determine whether or not a product is suitable. As a result of education, market response and consumer pressure, quite a few companies have now reconsidered paying halal fees on products that are already considered halal. Well, firstly, I think domestically it's entirely unnecessary. I mean, we have, you know, maybe less than 2% of the population are uh, Muslim or identify as Muslim. Most of them are not observant Muslims, and yet suddenly we're cert certifying water, uh, all our livestock, our food produce. Um, it's entirely unnecessary, it's expensive, and I think it's a scam, and that's been proven... Scam for sure. ...by the evidence in the Senate committee inquiry. Many halal certifiers disagree about what constitutes halal. A lot of the organisations say on their websites that products such as honey, milk, nuts, grains, fish are all naturally halal. That is, no fees are required. Why is it these companies are paying money to state the obvious and then not disclosing it to the consumer? Why are some companies lying about halal certification? You know, there are a whole bunch of grubs in this industry <laughs> Um, who are crooks and that's why I have no shame or compunction in saying the industry itself is corrupt and it needs to be uh, redeemed if it is in our national interest to have our export markets available or these export markets available to us well let's clean it up let's stop the rorts and let's stop certification in Australia on, a wide, on the widespread scale that it currently is. There is a large level of concern within the community about halal certification. There are many examples of how pervasive halal practices have become in Australia. In many cases, they are unnecessary and not even predominantly for the Muslim market. This is just one example from the chicken industry. There are plenty more like it. 5% of chicken processing is exported, yet most is for domestic consumption. More than 70% of chicken processed in Australia is halal certified. Less than 5% of this is exported, primarily to non-Muslim markets. So why are these companies paying around $40,000 a year to be halal certified? Yeah, and that's the rort, folks. Domestic consumers are funding Islamic organisations. Yeah. Now, folks, I have no problem with companies getting their products halal certified for big Muslim markets overseas, because that makes marketing sense. But I do have a problem when the same product is pushed on domestic consumers and other Christian nations that don't want it.